It's a Gerber 06 Auto. 10th anniversary edition in this case. Versus Benchmade AFO 2. Part 2. A revisit. Because I did shoot a video like this uh, a few years back. And... I just got this here a couple weeks ago. Aluminum version. Stone washed. Drop point, no serrations. And then this is just a couple weeks old as well. But I've been carrying this every day. And using it, this one has not been used or carried. Too much, a little bit, a touch. But this one's been carried and used a bunch. I think these are getting discontinued, so I wanted to get another one before that happens. Unfortunately, it's my favorite knife, and unfortunately, it seems to be going out the door. This only version that's left is coated, serrated. Then, of course, I got Old Faithful here, the original AFO 9050. Come on, baby. There you go. Then, of course, still 154 CM here. Cool. Now, on this one, I actually didn't, I am not carrying it uh, tip down, it's tip up. And I did have some like, gun coat of some kind, black, I put on this. You pull, I pulled out here because this is where they mount it and it was all nicked up, so I kind of coated it. Hopefully that that paint stuff will wear off. Anyway. So, yep. So, anyway. We'll go through the specs as usual. And we'll discuss these two knives. I mean, it's not a, I'm not going to do a versus video. It's, it's a side-by-side -side comparison. And just because the angle of everything here, the AFO looks like it's quite a bit bigger than the 06. It's not. They're about the same size, and I'll try to show that here in a second. So the AFO 2 overall length is 8.5 inches, and the 06 anniversary, according to whomever, is 8.6. Blade length, 3.6 for both. Blade thickness, it says 125 thou for uh, the Benchmade and then 1300s for the the Gerber. 154 cm on the Benchmade, 58 to 60 Rockwell. And the Gerber is S30V and no Rockwell given. Handle lengths for both, 5 inches. Weight, 5.8 ounces for the Benchmade. 7.14 for the... Uh, the Gerber, and then handle thickness is six tenths for both. So essentially, this they're very similar in size. Let's see if I can get a better angle at this. Apologize, it's just I'm kind of. Let's see if I can. Uh, you probably see my stupid feet, but yeah, they're about. I mean, it's they're roughly the same size. You can tell different blade shapes. So I have covered this, I guess, the bench made pretty extensively. I don't really need, or if anybody's never seen any of my videos, they're all pretty redundant, but it's my favorite knife for sure. Handle and blade shape and cutting geometry, and this is no different. It's beautiful. I wish I could have gotten this one and unserrated, but there, you can't find them. So <laughs> it's kind of a bummer. But, and the major difference between that and this, I don't know if you'll be able to see, is breadth of the blade on the original is a little less than the new one. So you can see that this is quite a bit skinnier cutting edge to top of the blade than this. I'll get that out of the way. And this is nice and a nice deep broad blade. One difference for sure. Much more acute tip. And that's what I mean. That's just a really great all-around blade. It's good for piercing. Good for fine work. Good for digging out splinters, etc. 
and it's a good cutter, but still durable. You know, it's not like too fine of a tip or edge. I haven't even sharpened the sucker, and I've been carving a shitload of wood with it. And you can see that the coating on this is holding up pretty good. It's only two weeks old, though. But it's seen some good action. And this one, you can check that out. Now, the tonneau, this one I have carved just a tad with it. It does cut. Bites in really well in wood. But you can see that tip is just not quite as acute. It's a little bit more blunt. And I, I care, I've been carrying this on my days off. I'm on days off now. I got to go back to work, back to fires Monday, but I got another two days off. Just a 14 day rotation, 14 and two. Probably be going like that through, I don't know, about through December, but into December. And we'll see what happens after that. But it definitely gives me a chance to look at knives on my brakes <laughs> if we have service. So I've been actually buying a bunch of knives this summer. But, um, so there's a good look at that blade and I really like it. And okay. Here's another thing is this is cool. It's kind of interesting of a 10 year anniversary. I mean, I don't know, but that's neat. So like, I think the 10 year was probably 2018, 16. Well, it'd be 16, I guess. Cause it's an 06. I'm not a real Gerber guy, but this, this knife has always caught my eye and it was actually produced in August of 21. Yeah, sweet. These are really good knives. Now, the last one I got was a dud. Looked like it was put together. Now, pardon my terminology here, but it looked to me like it was put together by a retard at Gerber. And no offense to Gerber. I'm sure they don't hire retards. But it was just an awful example. The blade was not centered. Um, the liners and the, uh, the handles were not even matched up at all. I mean, there's gaps. So this one, actually one of these scales, there's, there's gaps and I can see it. I don't know if it's going to turn on the camera, but not as bad as the last time. Not as bad as that G10. So if you go and you buy a Gerber 06 auto, and I think this is a great knife and I'll get into that. I really like the, this knife, this version, but they're not perfect. Okay. So you're going to pay 180 bucks. That was another thing. It's about 170 or 180, depending on which knife you get kind of varies because they have coated tonneau coated tonneau serrated etc 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 but if you get this 06 the green handled one and i don't know how much different there is quality control between these and the black aluminum but if you get the green aluminum uh, anniversary edition i mean i this is a fine example and i'll get to the other details but starting out that this is a niggle a negative in my opinion the other one is and it's just what it is it's different it's just a different blade than the an AFO, but it's a little blunter. Not saying the thing isn't going to pierce stuff, but I did have a kind of a little bit of fine work to do on a blister pack. I, and I was trying to think of what it was. I can't. It was a couple weeks ago. Maybe it's headphones or something. But this thing was a major pain in the ass to get in there without cutting anything. Because this would, you just pierce right into it and just slice around whatever you're after. This one, I ended up using the belly. I can't pierce it with this safely. So I just like kind of cut with the belly and it worked okay so no offense it's not a negative it's just a whole different ball game here a whole different beast then we get this label now normally i don't like a bunch of uh writing on the blade billboarding as it were but i like this it's got the american flag which is cool it just looks cool to me i like it now i know negative or portland oregon especially these days carries a negative connotation to a lot of people for whatever reason i don't know what it is when i think of portland i think of Logs, logging, mills, big timber, huge trees. That's what I think of big water, like the big Columbia Ocean taking 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 lumber out to, to port, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, I don't know why that is, but that's just the way I look at it. So to me, when I see Portland, Oregon, USA, <laughs> that's what I think of. Unfortunately, a lot of negativity surrounding Portland agreed. You're not getting any arguments out of that from me. But... So I think it's just a, it's a cool looking knife. It's a, I really like the handle and this coating that they put on here is good. It's almost, I wouldn't say it feels rubbery, but it's like, it's smooth and it feels like it's really good durable coating. We'll see how it holds up. It's got that good pocket clip, which I always appreciated. And it's got this uh, glass breaker back here, which is, it's fine. It is what it is. You know, I'm not a real total fan of it, but it is what it is. 
and then mounting hardware. But it's a good clip. It goes in and out. Good retention. Looks cool, I think. I like it. It's got that uh, yeah, parkerized finish on it. And black liners. Okay, so here's a negative. Probably the only negative I have. Well, there's two negatives. The tip, I don't consider negative. It just is. It is what it is. You like it or you don't. I happen to like it. It's not my favorite, but it's a good blade shape. Centering's off a little bit. Not as bad as that last one I had. The last one I had actually rubbed. And you can see, I don't care what people say about Benchmade. I own about 50 plus Benchmade knives. Uh, vintage, like mint condition vintage ones I bought and then new ones. I've only had, there's only two examples that I have that the blade's off center. All right. And then a third one that I did send back. Back to the factory, they sent me a new one, and it was it was pretty bad. I was pretty pissed about that, but that was several years ago, and they did fix the problem. But I don't think you can see that's so black; it's hard to see. Perfect blade centering there, and then here's one of those vintage minty ones that I bought. It's been a few years now, five years ago or so. I bought this one mint condition, brand new, and you can see, you know, perfect centering. So close to much better centering, but not perfect on this. The last one I had, the G10 one, was way off. Okay, Just pointing it out because you don't know if it's what you're going to expect. Maybe they put a lot of effort into, into these guys. Maybe the aluminum ones, maybe just the anniversary aluminum ones. I don't know. It's pretty close. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. And that's what you're going to get. And that whole thing, I'm sure it's going to irritate some people with the liners and the, the scales. That's... Sure, I don't know if this gets wrapped. There is gaps in there. And if you order one of these, we have one, and you feel free to comment whether yours is perfect or you got issues yourself. I mean, look up any video on this on the on the web and uh, or on YouTube. And I think pretty much all of them are going to say the same thing. There's a little fit and finish issues. Now, the other negative, so there's kind of the scales thing. And there's kind of the uh, centering thing, which is not bad. That's doable. Like, I'm happy with what I got here because I didn't know what I was going to get. So, and I like the knife. I like the design. I wanted to try an aluminum one. And so I'm happy. The other is same as usual. And every, every uh, video you'll see will uh, kind of be parallel with this point. It's kind of got a weak auto. Now it's strong enough. Okay, it's fast enough. I mean, how fast do you need it? It's kind of fun to have a real snappy one. Like that uh, Benchmade Claymore I got. That thing is like a rat trap. And so is this one for that matter. And, you know, I didn't adjust it at all. It's like super tight actually when I got it. And it's coated, you know. So it's going to be a little slower until it breaks in. But And it did. It took a couple of days. And it was a little sluggish out of the box. I mean, not bad. Totally doable. Not bad. But not like what it is now, now that I've had it for a couple of weeks. And this isn't bad. It's much better than it was. The only thing is, is there's there's a tad bit of blade play in it. Zero in that. Absolutely zero in this. It's like a pretty much a rocket coming out of there. And then this one as well. And this one has not been oiled recently. And I've taken it swimming. It's been, I did wipe it out with a Q-tip, which is one benefit of this thing. Just too solid handle. But it's the old version. This one's a little trickier. I'll show you that. So it's kind of got a standoff here. And the backspacer here. Otherwise, smooth on the inside. Smooth handles on the inside. So it's it's pretty easy to clean out. I mean, heck, if you had an air compressor too, it would just help. So getting back to this though. So if I can give you a better view. It's a little bit more complex. I mean, there's more things to clean out. It's got liners which these ones do not. There's no liners. So that's kind of an added little complexity. So if you were to clean it out, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Another thing is there's nothing kind of keeping this thing together all the way from, and I guess, the stop pin and the pivot all the way back here to the backspacer. But, so I don't know. I mean, if you have one of these knives or you got an opinion on it, feel free to comment. I like the safety very positive and that's one that's one negative about these is i've never been a fan of i never use a safety on these and they just sometimes accidentally do click and 
you know, they won't open. I've never had a push button auto open in my pocket. As mentioned in a previous video with the, uh, like an Axis auto, like my Adamus, auto Adamus, I did have that happen once. Luckily they're tip up, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, the big difference here too between the two knives um, is gonna be the weight. So about an ounce and a half, 5.8 ounces here, and then seven point, you know, seven and a tenth, whatever. 7.15, 7.14 ounces here. It's a little heavier. It's just kind of got a bigger handle, I think, overall. And it is comfortable. I mean, it is a very well-designed knife as far as ergos go. It's great. My hands are all dry and gnarly from the fire season. It is what it is. Um, so, very comfortable. I always like to choke up on these, too. It's like everything else, pretty much. So you could do that, no problem. The pocket clip, you don't even know what's on there. It's just real nice in all grips. And it is a tactical knife. So, of course, if you were going to jack somebody, I'm sure that'd be comfortable for you and efficient. But then again, a little cleaner. Got the palm, your classic palm swell handle, pretty neutral except for the palm swell. I just prefer it. I like it. And again, there's that safety. They can kind of get in your way a little bit. But same thing, choke up on it. Good positive grip. Reverse grip is good. This one does have a glass brick in the back, whereas the original did not, but it is what it is. I think it looks fine. It's kind of cool looking, actually, and it's not quite as big and pronounced as that one, but no complaints either way on either one of those. So I did watch a video. A guy did take, there's one there on YouTube. It's fairly recent, within the last year. The guy got the same exact knife as this and decided to replace the spring, the coil spring, with the supercharged one, basically. It sounded like the best he could get or he could get his hands on. He said it helped. Apparently, I think if, you know, you, should, you, might be, you might watch it, see what you think he's saying. I think it, it looked like kind of a pain in the ass to do the whole operation. And then he was done. I think there was an improvement, but I don't know if it's worth it because it's kind of sluggish, but it's not bad. I mean, it's, it's good enough, I think. You know, it's good enough. It's not overly snappy. People like that, myself included. As pointed out in my original video, I mean, you can see how that spring in this thing operates. You don't get any tension on it till about right here. Uh, what would you call that? A 45? Not a 45, but a 90 degree. It gets about 90 degrees, and it's uh, then you, you feel the spring. So, I mean, honestly, you could go like this. You know, this thing, there's, it doesn't work that way. I mean, a spring is, you know, it's, it's all the way. Yeah, I say that's not going to do it for me, but you can see it's, and I am pulling the button off. I mean, spring goes throughout. This is the better spring, better operation. You know, like I said, in my opinion, the better design, the better knife, but this is a good alternative. And that's me. Two guys, the next guy in line can pick them both up and say, oh, no, this is. I definitely prefer this one. That's cool, you know. Speak your mind if you like in the comments. Last video I got, I mean, a fair amount of likes and a fair amount of dislikes. So it's maybe it's what I said. <laughs> maybe it's my lack of knowledge or the simple fact that I kind of pointed out that I did prefer the Benchmade. You know, probably a little bit of both. Hopefully this video cleaned a little bit of it up because, as I did mention, maybe not in the original video, I do like the Gerber. I like the design. And all that, I just felt like they kind of failed to do a good job on it. Whereas this one is awesome. And I will carry this and use it, and I really and I do like it. Be a good woods blade for sure. Be happy to carry it a little bit heavier in that one. And this one's heavy enough, you know. A lot of people prefer something lighter, but hey, it is what it is. So anyway, thanks for watching. I can't think of anything else uh, that's really add, except for I am going to use and enjoy this. I'm glad I picked it up. And if you like the looks of it, look into that. If you like side opening autos like myself, this is definitely a good option for that style. Kind of like that military style. Very clean, in my opinion. You know, and there's nothing funky about it. Just mil spec. In fact, this is the same kind of... Same design as this. Like the military wanted something like this. I think it all started with Almar, the one that probably produced the very first one for the military. And Benchmade produced it for Almar. And then Gerber got in on the, 
the patent. I don't know what you know what word you would use, but so the military definitely has a MSN, SSN. I don't know number, ordering number, stock stock number. They stock these, and they used to stock these too. I don't know if they still do because these are kind of going out. It's unfortunate. And I think Hoag's kind of got their hands in on that too. And I'd like to get a Hoag site opening push button auto as well. Maybe do a side by side with all three. And of course, don't forget the OG. So I'm super stoked. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, go ahead and ask them. If you've got any comments, please add them in there and uh, share some of some knowledge or whatnot. All right, I'll talk to you later.